What's good and welcome into your Overwatch Power Rankings. I'm Trevor Scales. Stage one is complete. Stage two on the horizon. And Tyler Erzberger is here from sunny Southern California to help us break it all down. And Tyler, let's begin with number five, the Boston Uprising, who, like their name, have been trending upward lately. Yes, uh, coming into the stage one season, no one thought the Boston Uprising could be even a top 10 team. And there's only 12 teams in the league. So... When it comes to positive surprises, Boston Uprising were number one on the list coming into the year after the Stage 1. This team has just been excellent, and it all starts with their DPS superstar, Dream Casper. No one really knew who he was coming into the Stage 1 season. People were like, eh, mid-tier performer on you know, North American teams, wasn't a big South Korean name, but the play he's been one of the best Genjis in the league, and Prophet, the DPS player from London Spitfire, the Stage 1 champions, credited uh, Dream Casper is being the best DPS from the West in Stage 1. So, if Boston Uprising can keep their hard nose, grinded out style, I think this team could even go higher in Stage 2. Sounds like their team name takes on the identity of the city. Now, no, no, number 4, we find Soul Dynasty, who had a, an abrupt end to their run after being knocked out by LA. Yes, if Boston Uprising was the most positive surprise of Stage 1, then Seoul will look at themselves as the biggest disappointment of Stage 1. This team expected to be in the Stage 1 Finals, and it didn't even make it to the Stage 1 playoffs. And a lot of that can be credited to the, uh, the Mercy meta in Stage 1. Uh, Seoul's greatest strength is their support duo of Ryo Jae Hong, the best Ana in the world, and Toby, the best Lucio in the world. With Mercy needing to be played almost every single scenario in Stage 1, one of those two players couldn't be on one of their most versatile you know, flexible heroes. They had to be on Mercy. Now that Mercy is getting, you know, out of the meta, it's not all about Mercy. It's not all about her, you know, healing and, and rezzing and bringing back people to life. Those two players can now have a more, you know, you know fresh style. They can play their heroes. Toby can play Lucio in stage two. And hopefully, uh, Ryu Jae Hong, the captain, shot color team can have a more, you know, diversified style in stage two. And hopefully, Soul will look up for, you know, a playoff spot, maybe. So Tyler, the Houston Outlaws find themselves in the three slot after a really solid showing for them in Stage 1. We might as well call it uh, the Houston Outlaws Team America because after Stage 1, they signed Fact Fiction, a member of the Overwatch World Cup Team USA team, and now they have four of the six starters from that team, only missing Sinatra and Adam at the support role. So yeah, looking at this team, they're the only team who were in the Stage 1 playoffs with it, without a South Korean player on the roster. And they're the only team in the entire league with a, a record above 500 without a South Korean starter. This team has just been excellent. After starting 0-2, they've just been on a run. And after making, you know, the Stage 1 playoffs and losing the London Spitfire, they're looking for more in Stage 2. This team could be a title contender. Now, this last two slots you would think would go one way, but it's going to go a bit of a different way. London Spitfire, who actually won Stage 1, is going to find themselves in the two slot. Help us explain that one, please. Yeah, I mean, the story is great, right? I mean, 12 hours, they played three games, they lost New York XL to start the, the, start the day on, you know, Championship Saturday, but they ran it back 12 hours later to beat them in a reverse sweep. You know, the story is beautiful. But you can't look at just the narrative. You have to look at the overall Stage 1 performance, and London Spitfire were inconsistent. One week they would look like the best team in the world, next week they would look like they, they didn't even know how to play with each other. You know, now they look like they've actually solidified a roster, trading uh, Rascal, Birdring's longtime duo partner, the DPS role, to the Dallas Field, who needed a much needed, who need a lot of help currently, you know, at a three and seven record. But London look like they've solidified their roster. Prof and Birdring are the best one-two punch offensive duo in the league. And maybe, you know, with a little bit more consistency, this team could be one. But right now, I think the team that we have number one is the most consistent in the league. That number one team, New York XL, right? Top dogs, tell us why. It has to start with Jonak. Uh, coming in the year, he was a rookie. No one real like, people knew who he was, you know, a solo queue superstar. The support, this support Zenyatta, you know, the savior, this, this, this mythical figure. How good he would be when the lights were turned on. And now, if the lights turn on, he's actually, you know, an MVP. I would have him as my MVP for stage one, and he's just... He's a game changer. He's a support that can play as, you know, an offensive dynamo. He has he out damages people as a Zenyatta at the support role. That that's unheard of. He's he's an incredible player, and this team just has a really great roster. From tanks to DPS to coaching to the force. This team just played really well in stage one, and they look like they can only get better in stage two. 
there will be some issues looking back at losing to London, you know, in the stage one. They did choke a little bit, but they should take that as a learning experience. Go forward, and if everything turns out, stage two championship is in their future. Top team, top player, simple enough. That's it for us. Make sure you come on back, check in on the power rankings each and every week right here on ESPN.com. For Tyler Erzberger and everyone here at ESPN, I'm Trevor Scales. Y'all take care.